What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Taxable Bassin. Today's video, we're gonna be doing a little bit of knot tying. I have five knots, beginners to advance, easy knots for you guys to tie your lures on, connection knots, braid to leader, let's go. Fishing knots is one of the most common questions we get all the time. And if you go online, there are so many different fishing knots, so many different opinions on what to tie, when to tie, how to tie. Today's video, I'm gonna show you guys five knots. Three knots to baits and two leader knots, two connection knots to braid. You guys know that we throw a lot of braid to leader, braid to mono, braid to floral. So I'm gonna show you two knots that I use and haven't had any issues with. And yes, there are some knots out there that have that are a higher test rating, higher pound breakage rating, but uh, I like knots that are easy to tie. When I am out on the boat or I'm out there hoofing it on the shore and I'm packing around, I don't wanna have to use my, my toes and my feet to try and tie some of these knots. Some of these knots are crazy. The Bimini Twist, the Crazy Alberta, some of those knots are just, they're great, but they're very hard to tie or it takes a lot of time to learn to tie them. So the knots I have for you today are gonna be something that you can learn very easily do very quickly, doesn't matter if it's windy out on the boat, rough water, no matter what, it is very easy to tie your leader and your bait. So the first knot that I'm gonna to talk to you guys about, you know, we've spent uh, several years talking about this, this knot. And I learned about it from, I probably I think it was Mac, and it, it's an ocean knot, it's called a San Diego Jam, and it's what these guys use for t uh, tuna fishing. So if we figure if it's, good enough for four to 800 pound saltwater tuna, it should be good enough for five to 10 pound largemouth bass. And really really where it got started was, you know, Matt in that whole big bait game, throwing the, the big glide baits and stuff. You know, when you're launching those big baits out there and you backlash or something happens, you don't want that not to give and pop your lure and your, your bait go flying. So the San Diego Jam. Now for today's teaching purposes, I went and got some rope. So hopefully this is going to be easier for you guys to see. When we start talking about braid to leader, we're going to, blue is going to be braids. Remember that. But right now we're going to, we're going to have our, our hook or our uh, split ring. This is going to be our lure to tie a San Diego jam knot. Here's what you do. So you're going to run your line through the eye of the bait. Now again, this is rope, so it's going to be a little bit different and harder to tie, but just for visibility purposes, um, wanted to use the rope so you guys can see. Obviously, you're gonna make a little bit of changes to uh, the, the amount of loops as you tie this knot based on line diameter. The, the smaller the line, the more loops you do, the bigger the line, the less loops you do. So for today's visibility purposes, and to make it easy, I'm gonna do three loops, but typically I do six to eight loops, um, sometimes just seven, but to start out, run your tagline through the eye of your bait. Now you're gonna come up and you're gonna make, kind of pinch this line together. So you're gonna pinch it, it's gonna kind of make this loop. And I'm actually gonna pinch all three because this is gonna make an outside little tab area. And at the very end, that's gonna run my tag in through to, to finish this knot off. But just to show you, so I got the pinch. You see this loop right here. I'm gonna run just for uh, easy purpose, just to make it easy, I'm gonna do three loops. One, two, three. What that leaves me with, I've got three wraps, again, normally six to eight, so seven, whatever it's gonna be. I'm gonna have a loop here, and right here where I'm pinching, I also have a loop. So I'm going to run this down through the base. Now right here on the side of my loop, I got that little, that little hole right there, I'm gonna run my tag through there. And that is the final step. Now I'm gonna walk this knot up, I'm not gonna cinch it right off the bat, I'm gonna kinda walk it up, get it somewhat tight, slide this down onto, and then cinch. And that is gonna be the San Diego Jam. Very, very strong, haven't had any issues. The greatest part about this knot is you can check your wraps, you can check your knot, you can see if it is tied correctly. So many times I go to tie this knot, I'm not paying attention, I look down, I'm like, oh, that knot sucks. Cut it off and redo it. And that is, again, that is what's gonna be consistent about all these knots 
very easy to see and very easy to check to make sure you tie them correctly because you know we all get busy on the water we lose focus and the last thing we need is to tie a knot incorrectly and have it cost us a giant fish a big expensive lure a tournament win a pb so that is the san diego jam that is a knot that i tie most of my big baits on if not all the time unless i'm using straight braid the next knot that I want to, to share with you guys is going to be just the, the Palomar knot. A very easy knot to tie, very strong knot. It's the knot you need to tie if you're throwing drop shots, uh, if you're throwing um, any type of finesse base that you want to tag in, that's, the, that's the, the knot you're going to tie. But it's very, very simple. I'll show it to you. Again, this is going to be your bait. This is your fishing line. You're gonna go through. Now there's two different ways to start this. I'm gonna show you both the ways. Go through, this is how I taught my kids. Through, and then back through. Okay? Leaves you with your tag end and a loop on the other side. Okay? So through, back through, and then just an overhand knot. Through, back through. Now just like tying your shoes, I'm gonna bring this looped in around, and I'm gonna grab it with my other hand. You can see how it makes this little loop right here. I'm gonna reach through, pull that loop through, and then the last step is to pull my bait through that piece right there. And then you're gonna slowly cinch it. Again, with all these knots, you're gonna to wanna to wet it and cinch it slowly so it cinches down nice and tight. Let me do that again for you a little bit slower. Some people, again, it's, what's up bud? Sure. <laughs> My four-year-old decided to come in and join the party. Okay, let me tie this for you again. So again, through, back through, overhand knot, pull it through, and cinch. So, through, back through. Okay? If you want, take your main line, just fold it in half, and run the loop through. Okay, like I said, I usually teach my kids through, back, through, overhand knot. So there it is, boom. My bait's on my, on my line. Okay, overhand knot, come through this, grab that loop. See that? Now the last thing is to grab your bait through this loop. Okay, spread it out, grab the bait, pull it through. Now you're just a slowly cinch. Very, very easy, very, very strong. Now, if you're tying a drop shot, this is gonna be your drop shot tag in. This is where you're gonna put your weight. So this is the knot you're gonna tie for throwing a drop shot. That is the Palomar knot. Now another version of this knot, a great knot if you're throwing straight braid, say you're frogging and you want to tie a, I never tied, uh, truss braid with a single palomar knot, I'll actually do the double palomar knot because sometimes braid will slip. So, untie this for you. Here we go, this is the double palomar. Only do this if you want added strength or you're throwing straight braid. So, through, back through, okay? So I have my tag end, I got my loop. Now, just like the name says, double Palomar, I'm gonna bring it through once, bring it through twice. Same thing, grab your opening, pull your bait through, and then slowly cinch. Now, I'm not sure how this is gonna do with the rope. See how pretty it is? It's wanting to cinch down on itself. But that is a fantastic knot to throw straight braid. I don't wanna really cinch this down because I won't be able to untie it but that is the double Palomar. So if you're throwing a frog, you know, something straight braid, a top water bait that you don't need the loop on the front for added action, a double Palomar knot is a great way to go. Very easy to tie, just a normal Palomar. I tie that a lot. Um, very, very simple knot to tie, very easy, very strong. You drop shot fishermen, this is a must knot to know how to tie. All right, the last knot, the last knot that I want to share with you is going to be the uni knot. Pretty easy knot to tie, but the reason I want to show it to you 
Uh, it's a great standalone knot, but it's also how I tie small braid to small fluorocarbon on my connection knot. <laughs> the uni knot I want to share with you guys because again, this, this applies to your connection knot, a uni to uni leader. Go ahead, bud. go around. Um, if any time I am tying braid to small fluorocarbon, uh, I use the uni to uni. Any other time I'm using a, a mono leader, that's when I will do this double San Diego jam. But a uni knot is a great knot to tie on your bait as well. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna run your tag line through the your eye of your bait. Okay, give yourself some, some slack. I'm going to pinch right here above the hook eye. Now all I'm going to do with this, again this is your line, all I'm going to do with your tag end, I'm going to make another loop, okay? So now what that does, that creates a loop right here. But more importantly, these two pieces is what I'm going to wrap this tag end on. So I'm going to wrap this around these two pieces right here. Typically seven, eight, nine times, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to do three. So I'm gonna, let me turn it sideways for you so you can see. So grab your tag end, give yourself a loop. See that loop right there? Now all I'm gonna do, one, two, three. You wanna make sure your loops are all, your wraps are all going the same direction, and then you're gonna slowly cinch. Okay? Now this knot's gonna lock down you're gonna slide it down. Again, this rope is kind of a pain, but that is the uni knot. Very strong, very easy, and more importantly, this is the knot you're gonna use if you want to tie braid to small fluorocarbon. So let me tie that one more time for you just so you can kind of see it. I'm not used to untying knots. So, hook of your bait, I have your hook, whatever, or I have your bait. Okay, bring it down, pinch, take your tag end, double it up over this guy right here. This, these two pieces, this is what you're gonna wrap your tag end through. So here you go, one, two, and three, and then slowly cinch, okay? Now this is gonna come down and cinch down really tight on the hook of your on the hook or the eye of your bait. That is the uni knot. So I just showed you the uni knot, and the reason I wanted to show you that is because one of my favorite leader knots to tie for small diameter braid to small diameter fluorocarbon is gonna be the double uni knot. So I just showed you how to tie the uni knot. Now I'm gonna show you how to tie the, the double uni knot. Now typically if I'm throwing braid to mono leader, like my big baits, I'm throwing 65 pound test to uh, 20 or 25 30 pound mono I will tie a double blood knot I'll show you that knot next but for finesse fishing small diameter braid you know your 10 12 pound braid which is your two pound diameter real small braid to your four five six seven eight pound fluorocarbon this is going to be the knot that I tie again there's other knots out there there's crazy knots to tie but this is very easy to tie you can see when it's tied right and I haven't had any issues with breakage. Again, stronger knots out there, but I don't need to have to tie them with my toes and my teeth and wrap in my knees and all sorts of stuff. So here is the double uni knot. Blue line is my braid, orange is my fluorocarbon leader. So I take the two, and I'm gonna overlap them. I'm actually giving myself a little extra excess to play with just because the rope, but you can see how I overlap them. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my braid, just pinch this right down here. Take my braid, just like the uni knot, gonna make a loop onto itself, okay? See how that leaves that loop right there? Now I'm gonna take my tag end and wrap it three times for the sake of this video, but seven, eight, nine times if I was tying small braid to small leader. So here we go, I'm gonna, and I'm gonna make sure that I wrap both the orange and the blue, so braid and fluorocarbon. One, two, and three, okay? That leaves me with that, slowly cinch, okay? So I have one down. I don't cinch it completely, just get it somewhat tight so it's not gonna slip. Now I flip the line around. 
I'm going to do the same thing, but now with my leader. Again, loop over itself. Okay. One, two, two, and three. Cinch down. Okay. Now I'm going to wet both lines again. I'm going to cinch them together. Okay. Kind of clean up your knot, line up everything, and then really cinch. I'm not going to cinch it very hard because I won't be able to get this untied. But now what you have here is two uni knots pulling against each other, keeping each other tight. This is a very small, very narrow knot that goes through micro guides, goes through the, um, the bail on the reel very easily. You can reel this knot all the way down into the spool on your spinning rod and tie extra long leaders. You know, I've talked about it in the past, sometimes I will tie a, a 20, 30, 40 foot, four carbon leader depending on how deep I'm fishing. Um, but that I can reel up in my reel and not have any issues. That is the double uni knot. Again, a single uni knot is great to tie straight to your bait. Double uni knot, uni to uni, is a great way to tie small diameter braid to small diameter fluorocarbon. Untie this one real quick. Again, I'm not used to untying knots. The next knot that I want to share with you guys is probably the most common knot that Matt and I use. Uh, for braid to mono leader, and that is the double blood knot. Okay, for this knot, again, it's very, very common. So if you're you're throwing bigger braid to bigger leader, you can throw you can get away with it too to bigger fluorocarbon. If you're really tying heavy, heavy fluorocarbon, you know your 30, 40 pound fluorocarbon, go with the uni to uni. It'll just be easier to tie. But uh, anything smaller than that. Small diameter uh, mono, we're gonna throw or tie the double blood. Now what this is, this one's a little bit easier, hope it should be easier to see. Again, braided line, leader line. In this instance, let's talk, we'll say monofilament, okay? So we're gonna overlap them, we're gonna cross them. Give yourself some slack. All you're gonna do is pinch these two together right there. Okay, you're gonna wrap this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine loops. Now what you're gonna do, where you pinch this, you're gonna run this tag back through right there where you pinched, okay? Now, and now I'm gonna pinch it with my other hand. I'm gonna switch hands. So all I did was pull this tag through, okay? Now I'm gonna pinch that same spot where this tag end came through and now I'm gonna do the opposite with my mono leader, okay? I'm gonna wrap it. One, two, all I'm doing is wrapping this around my main line. Three. Now where this gets tricky, I shouldn't say tricky, but remember that blue tag, that braid tag that I ran through where I pinched? Now I'm gonna take my mono leader and come back through the opposite direction, but still that same area where I pinched. You can see where I pinched creates that little loop. So now I'm gonna bring that through itself, okay? So now I have my two tags and my two main lines. See that? Now I'm gonna wet and I'm gonna slowly cinch together. Again, this is rope, so it's not gonna do it as easily, but you can see that is cinched. So again, on my braid, I'm gonna do eight or nine loops. On my mono, depending on how big of mono it is, I'm gonna do five to, to seven or eight wraps, depending on how big of a line it is. The bigger, the less. But then I'm gonna, I'm gonna slowly work that down and then cinch it. Now you can see, if this is tied correctly, you have your braid coming out one end and your mono coming out the other end. You can see your loops right here. You can see I did two on that one and two and three on this one. Again, change up your loops accordingly to your line size, but that is a double blood knot right there. Now, you do not want to trim these tabs too short. Trim them just a little bit longer than normal, and if you really want, you can take some of that UV glue, you know, go to your local fly fishing shop or go online Amazon or, or wherever you can get it. It's a UV glue, put a little dab on there, hit it with a UV light, and that is like super glue on your knot. But that is probably the number one knot that Matt and I tie for our braid to mono leaders right there. 
Again, that is the double blood, double blood knot. So there it is guys. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. Again, anytime you're tying knots on camera, it's, it's hard to see, it's hard to zoom in. But uh, the rope obviously makes it a little, a little bulky in the hands, a little bit more clumsy to tie. But hopefully you guys got that visual where you could actually see and practice. You know, go, go down to your local Walmart or hardware store, get yourself some rope like this and just practice where you can see. Then go out and get, you know, get that small line and do it with that. If you need glasses, get glasses. But the most important thing you can do is tie a knot to your bait. You don't want to buy all that nice equipment, buy all that expensive lures, buy that nice fancy boat, kayak, whatever, and you finally get that bite. And because you tied a bad knot, now you're baitless and you're heartbroken because your PB just broke your line and swam away based on a bad knot. So there it is guys, that's five knots for you. Practice, that way when you get out on the water, you can tie those knots perfectly, you have the confidence in them, and uh, you put those fish in the boat, on the shore, so you're taking those PB pictures. As always guys, we appreciate you. If you guys have any questions about any of these knots, please leave them down below in the video description. We will get to those as soon as possible. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to our channel. We do three videos a week for you, simply teaching to help you guys catch more bass. As always, we appreciate you. Have a good one.